things with your church, but I don't feel comfortable renting from you because it doesn't make sense. We're, we're the same mind. We're the same heart. Uh, so I'd like to just uh, start coming to the church and bring my ministry to your church, if you don't mind. I mean, as, as part of the deal was is that he gets to continue to do that ministry here. Um, yeah, I ain't got a problem with that. <laughs> I've been praying for the church and, and praying, move people to service. Serve, 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 serve. And that's what he's talking about, is serving the people. And so he is going to be working out of this fellowship hall. And it's perfect timing to get that place widened out. Uh, looks like the Lord might have known what was going on. What was going to be, what do I say? Maybe. He knew what was going on, what we're going to need. And so uh, Mark is going to be doing a food ministry five days a week here, Monday through Friday. And then Sundays after church, every Sunday we're going to have uh, free food and fellowship. Uh, but the difference is, and I need to talk to you about this, I like to do uh, one free food and fellowship on first Sunday. Uh, and we'll have to figure out how we work into that. Um, at least one Sunday out of the month. So that, you know, give people a break or whatever. But we'd still be able to do the free food and fellowship that's for the church. And those people are still welcome that you're working with. Uh, but... Uh, he is going to be working with people who are in need uh, five days a week and on Sundays every month uh, on Sundays except for that one month we do it. So we're going to have a very active participation from him and his group. On Wednesdays he's going to encourage them to come here after church and he is making himself a member of New Hope Pentecostal. Uh, that's big stuff. He can preach. He can teach Bible studies. He is excited about souls. He is faithful with his, with his uh, finances to the Lord which he's going to be using in his ministry uh, which is already something we've discussed and what we're going to do here. Uh, this, is, this is God's blessing to this church. I'm telling you right Right now, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Can we just welcome Mark as the newest member of New Hope Pentecostal Church? Praise God. You will see his wife, I'm sure, on Sunday. or uh, But he's got a wife. And, <laughs> they just did the service today. Uh, you'll see his family has a wife and two wonderful children. Uh, and we're just, just excited. I mean, when he told me what he wanted to do, I was like, uh, I, I feel God is doing something I shared with you. My wife's burden for, the, for people who are in need to feed the people. Uh, one of the things I appreciate about Mark is he also understands the need not just to feed people physically, but to feed them spiritually. Because after he feeds them, he teaches them a Bible study. Uh, and he's teaching them Acts 2.38. He is an Acts 2.38 believer. Uh, and so, uh, man, that is just exciting. So please get to know Mark. Uh, you will see Mark in the pulpit. He's already preached here before to help me at times when I'm gone. Uh, so uh, if I'm ever gone, he'll be able to do that again. So get to know the man. He is pretty cool, and uh, I'm excited to, to have him as a part of our, our family. Yes, sir. Well, and, and the invitation is open for everybody to come together. Right. Everybody's welcome every night. So praise the Lord. What Mark is saying is that this is not just for the poor, but anybody who needs, if you need a break on, on once a week, you want to, or, you know, as much as you need, but if you need a, if you need a break and you don't want to cook a meal, you can bring your family. Well, I ain't been around for a couple months, but I know to stay in church and be a part of it, like being a person. Yes. I'm willing to offer myself, hey, one or two guys to do where I can help. That's, that's what we're looking for. That was going to be my next announcement. He's going to, if, if anybody wants to be a part of that ministry, uh, let Mark know. I also have Diane Jones's sister at the funeral of telling her about this new event. And she wants to come and help. She goes, I need service and I need to help. And so she's also going to be a part of that. Uh, if you know people who are struggling and they need some help, you know, feeding, even if it's a family, they need it every night. You know, tell them they're welcome to come to New Hope. You know, that's just going to make us look good. We're willing to go out there and feed the hungry. Uh, we're just, uh, that's going to really put us on the map. I'm, ooh, I'm just pumped. I'm pumped. Praise the Lord. If you'll stand, we're going to get into the Word of God. Praise the Lord. We're going to preach tonight on becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. Man, if you can do this, you're going to spiritually grow. You will develop spiritual maturity as a, as a result of understanding these principles that I'm going to share with you. Becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. If you'll turn to 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. We'll dive into the word of God. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God 
of all comfort. Someone say all comfort. All comfort. He is the God of all comfort. Verse 4. Who cometh, I'm sorry, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. There's that word again. All. Someone say all. all. That's all inclusive. In all our tribulation. Not just some of your tribulation, but all of your tribulation. That we may be able to comfort them which are in, in any trouble. <laughs> Anybody been in trouble in the last year? By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. We've got to come here and get the comfort of God and let him get us through our tribulation so that we can then go out and comfort others, show them the comfort of God. I believe that I now have the ability to show you these because God has comforted me in all my tribulations. Paul said, let it happen to me first that I might then teach you or show you. I want to be a part of this scripture to show you that I have been comforted through all of my tribulation. And now I have the ability to, to, to take that comfort that I've been given of God and show you how to enter therein. Verse 5, for, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Let's pray. Jesus, we have a, a challenge today to, to overcome, which is to learn how to do something that's very difficult. And that difficulty comes in understanding and embracing discomfort. It's a very essential component to our survival as the end times approach because we're going to go through many discomforts. But we ask you right now, let us understand these concepts that we might grow and be prepared for that end time. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. amen. Somebody clap one more time on to the Lord before you are seated. Hallelujah. Praise God, you may be seated. I am encouraged. Let me just tell you what's been happening lately. We have, I was just talking to Mark about this the other day. We had breakfast on Monday. We were talking about, you know, how we were going to work these things out to incorporate uh, this food ministry. And we were talking about, I was sharing with him where we're at. This idea of the need for us to begin to grow spiritually. We have to develop some level of maturity before we can even grow to the levels that God wants us to grow and bring the revival that God wants to bring us. Now we're having revival. It's a, it's a great thing to continually have souls coming into the house of God. It's a great thing to have people continually getting baptized and getting the Holy Ghost. Uh, but what we've been having is people come through, they get baptized, they get the Holy Ghost, they stick around for a while and you know we'll get one or two stay and the majority will not stay and that's somewhat normal but after four years this is our fifth year of ministry here what I've noticed as the pattern uh, pa as the pastor is a pattern and the pattern is that we're able to maintain you know 30 and 40 on Wednesdays and 60 and 70 on Sundays and we maintain that and the way we maintain that is we have enough flow of people coming in but people come in and new people come in and people who are supposed to stay end up leaving and they don't develop that maturity. And what happens is that we just stay even. And you know, most people be happy with that. You know, 60 or 70 on Sunday, is, that's, that's, that's a big church. And the majority of the churches of the organization we fellowship with. We have one of the biggest churches in the organization we fellowship. We're right up there. We're right up at the top, top three uh, uh, for numbers. But that might be great, but I'm not interested in just numbers. I'm interested in growth. And see, what we have is a continual growth, but we also have a continual escape route. Well, there's a leak in our balloon. Yes. And I want a big old balloon. I want a big old balloon that I can just enjoy and, and, and have. You know, but when there's all that air leaking out your balloon. <laughs> you got to love my illustration. It keeps you awake. <laughs> So what we need to do is we need to develop this concept of maturity in the Lord. Let me tell you what happens when we don't have maturity. Things come into our life, we're easily distracted, we're easily discouraged, we're easily offended. Oh, the Lord is just having fun right now. 
And we allow these things to get, out of, get us out of our rhythm with the Lord because when people come in, man, they come in, they feel the presence of God, they love it, they love the people. We don't have a big old gossip fest going on in this church. We don't have a, we don't have a bunch of people backstabbing each other. There's so much we don't have in this church that we have, the, we have that fertile ground. We got that black dirt, that soil with the little white spots in it. We got it. It's fertile. But the, but the seeds don't go deep enough. You preached a message on that at your, at your church that one day. Uh, the, the seeds don't go deep enough. We've got, we've got to dig a hole, man. You know, you just come in and plant yourself a little, you know, I'll sit down. I'll try it. We'll see what's going on. And, and, and I kind of like it. I'll hang out. And, but you, in order to dig deep, you got to make some commitments. That's why we need you to get you in service. You've you got to have some responsibilities. You've got to have some passions. And when you have that, you're digging a deeper, deeper hole. You're not just kind of sitting on the surface and seeing how it is. When you come in, your spirit says, yes, this is it. And your flesh says, wait a minute. Let's not get too comfortable. Because the flesh knows. Your flesh is slick. Your flesh says, well, wait a minute. And you ever heard the voices? Come on. You're not schizophrenic. Everybody got them. I love the devil and angel concept. That's so true. You got the devil on this side saying, hey, man, I know it's good, but just kick back for a minute. Don't get too serious. And the angel on this side going, hey, man, dig deep. This is it. Come on. Stay put. Dig in. This is where you need to be. And that's the difference. Are you going to dig deep? Are you going to get involved? And you know, the people who get involved, if you look at it, look at the stats. The people who get involved are the ones who stay. The ones that are digging deep. Uh, uh, Sister Paula has been here. This is her second 4th of July fast. Yes. See what I'm saying? She's digging deep. Sister Sue's been around for years. Uh, 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 see, many of you, you've been here. Cortez has been here for years. Uh, you know, uh, Sister White just got here, but she's been here since she got here. Been a whole year now, praise the Lord. You got to dig deep. When you dig deep is when you, you got to get involved. You know, I, I said this not too long ago, but I'm going to say it again because it's good. If you, when you go to AA, one of the first things they tell you is get a job. Do something of service for the meeting. Come in early and set up chairs. Get involved, make some coffee. Be the one that serves the coffee. Be the one that reads the readings. I've been there. The reads the readings in the beginning of the get involved because it, it implants you deeper. The more involved you are, the deeper you get planted. Right we need to start developing that maturity in this church. Now the good news is, is that we've got about 50 who are solid. Look, this is my church. That's my pastor. I love this place. I'm not going no place. Uh, come hella high water. This is where I'm going to be. And that's the base that we're, 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 we're living on. And that's great. I'm, I'm appreciative of that base. But what we need to do is we need to have that base widened. What happens if your base is this? I'm standing here at my base. Oh, I need to have some fun. Uh, um, what was you, oh, don't tell me. Israel? Is that your name, Israel? Eee, come on. I thought I was getting old because, you know. I was tired. I had to take a nap before church. I finished my sermon. I was like, ooh. Okay, this is my base. Here, here's my base. This is a small base. Okay? When your base is small and you're not well planted, push me over. Don't push me too hard. I'm old. Hard. No, hard. Give, me, give, me, give, me, give me one of these. Go ahead. He's young. I know he can handle it. Give me one of those. <laughs> Easy, Baba. Good Lord. Holy cow. <laughs> He's built. Okay, you see that base? That was a small base. Okay, now, when you start to build your base, and, and I'm, this is God. This isn't part of my notes. This, you can look at him. This ain't in there. God's trying to show you something. Now, I get, this, is, this base is a little bit. See, this base is I come and sit in the pew. That's this base right here. Everybody look at my feet. You see my feet? Go like this. Yeah, good. You're looking. See, that's, I, I come to church, and I sit in the pew. That's your base. Now, I, 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 I come to church and pay my tithes, help out with some fundraisers. That's the space. Now push me again. Hard, push me the same way you did last time. <laughs> it's a little harder, right? A little harder. Okay, now, 
my insanity. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm coming to church faith, paying my tithes. I'm getting involved in service. I'm getting involved in supporting the pastor. I, what do you need, pastor? What's going on, church? That, now, you're getting serious. You're reading your Bible. You're praying. This, this is your base. This is attack base. This is, this is, push me now. Push me again. Push me again. What's wrong with you, boy? You young? Come on, push. Push. You young, boy. Like, you, let's give a clap for him. Thank, thank, thank. You see the dude? Now, now, the Tony's over there. Yeah, let me do it. I would have knocked him down. <laughs> let me try that, man. He would have started from over there. Bam. But do you understand? The Lord's trying to talk. That, if you have a skinny base, you're not doing nothing but sitting in the pew. You don't have, when that attack comes, you just fall right over. And that's why people are, end up, that's why you got so many spaces. And there's a bunch, all the spaces you see, the people who are not here, it wasn't one thing happened that offended them. I haven't had one complaint. Oh, I love this church so much. I really do. Even when people leave, they just leave because, you know, they're being distracted or something's going on and, you know, they're being, you know, it's not because, oh, I can't believe he said that. And he must be, he, mm, we don't have none of that. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I got distracted. I got busy. I called up there. Oh, pastor, I just missed her. Oh, we just, it's never what you want. I'm not there. It must be a reason. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, oh, hi, what's going on? And they usually end up coming back because there, it's, it's just the base. In this church, that's the problem. And, and, and getting into the sermon and talking about getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, this is easy. This is comfortable. I can come in, sit down, listen, and do it if I want. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do a little bit. See, that's comfortable. There's no, there's no um, sacrifice. There's no compromise. There's, there's no nothing that's taking me out of my comfort zone. It's just I can come in, be me, leave, and keep doing what I was doing. I'm okay with it. So there's no challenge. And, and what happens? You get bumped by some pressure, you fall over. Now, we need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to step out and sacrifice my own time. To sacrifice my finances, to sacrifice, you know, things that, you know, I got, I got dishes, I got dirty clothes. My wife's got all that too. I got some of that, you know, there's some things I got to do in the house. I don't do dishes or dirty clothes. But, you know, I got things I got to do. I got a, my desk has a pile of phone calls I got to make. So, but our own business, I got a bill from Tricor for my, uh, my, my, um, doctor labs or something they sent me a bill i don't need a bill i got insurance right I, all i gotta do is call them and say listen why did i get this bill it's been there for what a month it hadn't been done because there's things that i it's, it's but it's uncomfortable to sacrifice the things i want or my time or my finances or whatever it is but you know what's more, even more uncomfortable i feel like god just spoke to you. you know what's more uncomfortable is this that's more uncomfortable because, because see, I lose finances, I lose time, I lose emotional strength, all the drain from the drama, whatever it is, that, of my falling, that takes even more. So you still lose it. So why don't you invest it in the right place? Put it into this instead of this. Put it into this. Put it in a battle zone. Now you're in a position of, of having a base for God. You're not going to go anywhere when you get a little pressure. Mm, praise God. Y'all got to start bringing more people to church. I preach good when y'all bring new people. I ain't lying. Lord speaks to me better everything. Y'all got to, y'all want to hear me preach? Bring some people to church. Watch me get down. It's uncomfortable to sacrifice. If we become comfortable with the uncomfortable, then it's a better investment of our time and our finances. We are going to do better and be happier people and the church will grow and so will you spiritually your maturity level will grow in the spirit verse 6 oh this is just saying so much verse 6 and whether be we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffered or whether we be comforted it is your consolation and salvation. Man, that, that sounds complicated, but I'm about to break it down. It says very clearly about affliction. When you're going through affliction, 
It's just like the scripture talks about being burned in the fire. Burns out the dross and you come out pure. When you're going through affliction, the consolation is your spiritual maturity. Your growth. How is it, okay, how does a muscle grow? Can I just look at it and say, come on, brother, come on. Build up. Come on, thunder. Come on, lightning. Let's go. No, no, I'm just going to look at them. They're going to grow, really. I'm going to look real hard. Right? No, what do you have to do? See, that's, that's us sitting in the pew. Just, you know, I'm going to grow spiritual. I'm just going to go to church. No, you've got to work it. They say the same thing about A. Anybody been to A? Uh, it works if you work it. Work it because it works if you work it. It's the same thing with church. You know, you got to understand AA was actually developed from church. They just didn't like the God thing. So they just made everything and took God out and put everything that church is. It's really the same thing. And they took out the scripture. Actually, they still got scripture in there. Our Father who art in heaven. What do you think they end with? It works because of the godly principles. And the reason why it doesn't work when it doesn't work is because they took God out of it. Make a higher power. You know what a higher power is? Jesus. Yes. Amen. They don't even know. You can call it whatever you want. It's still Jesus. And if you make it Jesus, it'll be a higher power. If you don't, it's just idolatry. You know what I used to worship? A rock. It's a real pretty black rock. And it was so funny. Don't like my rock? I used to worship a rock because it was my mom's and my mom had passed away. So I was real spiritual. Oh, my mama gave me this. And she's watching me from above. And this is it's going to bring me strength. You know what it was? It was a rock didn't give me nothing and I kept relapsing until I found out that's the rock I need <laughs> that's the rock I need I need to be solid on the rock and once I'm on the rock I was all right I gotta name my higher power I just can't say higher power yeah you know, but it's amazing how it does work a little but they tell you look to your left look to your right the next that person won't be here next time you show up because that's how much it doesn't work. I mean, the things that work are from the godly principles. But the idea is that we suffer, it makes us stronger, and we go, we got to go through that work. When you work a muscle, you have to, act, it actually breaks down, and muscles tear, and then, and, they, and then they're rebuilt. They build back up. That's why it hurts when you work out. You, if you're like me, you try to do it all in one day, and the next day you can't walk, can't pick up a fork, ow, ow, ow. Because you try to do it all in one day. Because you've broken down, you've torn the muscles that need to be rebuilt. You've got to work it. The affliction is the work in your life. Amen. See, I'm going to give you a different way of looking at things. If you look at things the way I'm going to show you, affliction will come and you'll treat it all a different way. You'll see it. See, we are beaten. Man. Enemies been defeated. But we can't sing that because we're being defeated by our uh, afflictions. They come and we're like, oh, and oh, oh, it's too heavy, oh, it's too heavy, oh, I can't do it, oh, and then you call me, oh, pastor, pastor, I'm having fun, this is, can I preach from down here, can I preach from down here, okay, I'm sorry, but that's what we're like, we just, oh, but see, when affliction comes to someone who understands the purpose of affliction, it begins to come and you go, oh. See, someone who wants to build their muscles, they know they're going for that purpose. So when they build it, it's affliction, they go, oh, man, that hurts. What do they say? Oh, that feels good. Oh, come on. This is God. This is God. God's just talking to you. Oh, when you're working out, me and Brother Peter, we were doing insanity. Oh, man, we're, uh, 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 we're doing these. And we're doing, and doing, uh, 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 and we're, oh, I can't move. The next day we come in, I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow, man. All right. Yeah, we're going to do this. Oh, but guess what? After five days, you're like, oh. Come on, are you ready? Let's go. And you're not, you don't have that same pain because the thing that, oh, come on, the thing that used to hurt doesn't hurt anymore because I've gotten used to that affliction. I understand, and my body is used to it. it I've got muscles now. It doesn't hurt. Oh, come on, somebody. It don't hurt anymore because my body is ready. I'm strong. Come on, bring it. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not even sweating. I can make it through the whole warm up and not even be tired. And the warm-up is like a whole exercise, it's like a whole pro, just the warm-up is like a whole program in these other people. It's, it's truly insane, I ain't lying. But you're ready for it. That's what the affliction is for. It's for your salvation. 
see, and we're pre- this is going right in the end times when I'm going to preach this Sunday because, see, you need to be ready to take that affliction because when the, when the tribulation comes and they start taking away your liberties and your freedoms and you're going through pain, you're going to go, oh, but oh, guess what? Oh, the Lord is coming. Who, who, who? Oh, oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's a sign. That's prophetic. Oh, that kind of hurts. Oh, but oh, God's coming. I can't wait to see him. We're really going to. Mm-hmm. So we need to be prepared. The affliction so that you can be saved. Because when that time comes, do you know how many even people who are apostolic are going to say that's too much? People in the modern church are just going, oh, well, that must be God. Because look, it was a miracle. That's how they think now. I saw a miracle. It must be God. That's the setup for the Antichrist to come on the scene and deceive the church. Yes. Look at the miracles. It must be God. Baloney. I look at the word. Amen. I look at the word and you can tell the miracle from the mustard. I was looking for a word with am. I couldn't figure There's miracles and then there's mundane. There you go. Miracle and mundane. We know the difference because of the word of God. Yes, amen. So you're going to be afflicted. If you have a different attitude towards your affliction, you are going to be stronger. Right up. Amen. So when that thing, listen, when you come to this church, the enemy is going to attack and you have to have the base. If you don't have the base, <laughs> and people end up going. Now, now some people who don't have the base, they come and go because they, they, they're smart enough to know that what, this is where they need to be. They get ingrained enough to know that this was the place that they got the strength in the first place. And they come back. And we have that all the time. We have people coming back. And, 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 there's, and what do we do when they come back? Hey! Hey, so good to come here. Not nah, mm, where you been? Mm-hmm, yeah, I bet you bringing a whole bunch of sin in here. I'm watching you. Mm-hmm. No, well, that's not not here. You can bring all that junk you because we're gonna get ready to wash it away. Because if you've got the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, all you got is repent, and all that stuff goes out the door. Bring it, bring it with you, because we'll help you get rid of it. There are some churches that don't want to have people come in who are sinful because they're afraid they're going to spread their sin. What kind of power you got in your church? Um, you, can bring, you can bring the dirtiest, rottenest, stinkiest, filthiest, but please bring them here. Please. Because we got what they need. How about the blood of Jesus? You ain't got it, we'll give it to you. You got it, you repent, we'll show you the truth, we'll show you what you do in the Word, and you get rid of your sin. Woo, praise God. Verse 7, and hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering, so shall ye be able also of the consolation. Yes. <sighs> when you understand what I'm saying, when that suffering comes, you know what you, you know? I got this. I got this. You, some of you are being consoled right now. Say, so you know what? I can have a different attitude towards my affliction. Towards those things. Because you're going to always, listen, until Jesus comes, you're going to go through affliction. Amen. You're going to go through attacks. You're going to go through family problems. I'm, I'm, I'm on a skate now. I'm doing good. I haven't had a whole bunch of affliction. last two, about two years, year and a half. My time's coming. It's coming. But I'm going to enjoy the time that it's not happening as much as I can. I'm just going to skate and ride and enjoy my boat and go fishing and wakeboarding and, 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 and swimming and tubing and, and, and go to work and enjoy my I love my job. You know, but I could lose my job. They're already getting rid of all the librarians. Who's got kids? They've already gotten rid of all the librarians. They're putting in other people, to, like, like aides, to do that job. They're, they're working on getting music and, and, and PE. They're pretty much, you know, floating around. They're, they're on real thin, thin ice. They could just, the, the, the state could just say, look, we're going to cut your money in half, so deal with that money. And then what? Whoever gets cut, gets cut. That could be me. I'm glad that room's getting bigger, because what if I got to move in there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A much bigger room. I don't need a hallway when it's my house. What do I need a hallway for? Just put pictures on? I'll pack up the pictures. <laughs> I need a place to live. I'm ready. You see my, it's not, oh, am I going to lose my job? And, oh, no, I'll just, where am I going to live? My boat's not big enough. I have to sell that. I don't know. Whatever I got to do. But I know that I've got consolation of my suffering already. Even the suffering that's, I haven't even gone through it yet. And I'm already over it. What kind of power is that going to give you as a church? What kind of base is that going to give you when the problem hasn't even come yet and you're ready for it? Hmm, come on. 
2 Corinthians 4.16. 1, 2, 3, 4. Can you handle it? Oh, we're doing good. What am I worried about? Oh, we're doing good, good. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 4.16. I want to thank you again for coming to church. It makes it a lot. That boy. It makes it a lot more church when there's people to preach to. When you got people who are willing to receive the word. And I just appreciate all of you very much. 2 Corinthians 4.16. For which cause we faint not. I could stop right there. So those little kids be like, yeah, why don't you? <laughs> I want to go home. I can stop right for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, or though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Ooh, come on, this should give you some hope. This is what a good name for a church, New Hope. Because you, you may need a new hope every time you come to church for some periods of your life. It shouldn't be like that all the time. But there are periods, sometimes you just, you live day by day. I need hope today. But it says here, day by day, the inward man is renewed. Even as the outward man perish. You know what that means? Even as I lose everything, even when things don't go my way, even when a family comes against me, even when my wife or my husband gets on my nerves or, or, or does something I don't appreciate, or, or even my wife or husband leave or, or my kids disappear. Whatever happens, that's the outward perishing. But when you have a relationship with God like we want to teach you in this church, the inward is renewed despite the perishing of the, f mm -hmm. despite the fact that your flesh is losing or suffering. The inward man begins to grow. That's called spiritual maturity. Only spiritual mature people can do that. As everything over oh, falling, oh, 10,000 fall on my left, 10,000 on my right. Oh, but I'm going to be all right. That only happens with spiritual maturity. But people who don't have that, that's what we need to get rid of in this church. We need to get the, we need to get the base going. And the, and the 50 or so that are here, that are, are part of the church, and then those that are kind of fringe, we need, to, we need to space it out. If you're here, it's not that difficult to get here. You got to be willing to walk through the uncomfortable. The flesh, as it perishes, that's the uncomfortable. And when you're comfortable with the uncomfortable, that's when you go through this process of the inward being renewed as the outward is falling apart. That's the definition of my sermon right there in, that, in, the, in those words. The inward is growing 